we will start by defining the domain of the boundary value problem. In this case, that is the fluid region inside of the nozzle. We will use symmetry to model only a 2D axisymmetric section of the nozzle. With Workbench open, start by dragging Fluid Flow Fluent into the project schematic. Rename it Nozzle Flow to help with organization. Next, right click on Geometry. and select Properties to open the Properties pane if it's not already open. On the right side, change Analysis Type to 2D. This tells the solver that the governing equations will be the 2D conservation equations. Then, double-click on Geometry to open Discovery. Once Discovery has opened, click on the menu icon in the top left and select Settings. In the new window, go to Units and Display Precision, and if it has not already been modified, change Length to Meters and Grid Spacing to 0.1 meters. This is more appropriate for the scale of the geometry we will be creating. You can then close this window. Next, select the Sketch tool if it has not already been selected. Click on the Z axis so that we are sketching in the correct plane, and press the V key on your keyboard to orient the view to be facing this plane. This places us in the XY plane. Because we are modeling an axisymmetric geometry, we need to reinterpret these axes so that the X is the axial coordinate Z and the Y is the radial coordinate R. To start the sketch, we want to create the curved line to define the side of the nozzle. To create the curve, we need to be able to define it using an equation in our coordinate system. We can determine this using the known variation of the cross-sectional area, shown here. Consider the radius at a point on our axisymmetric axis to be r. If this geometry was fully revolved around the symmetry axis, the cross-sectional area at any point would be pi r squared, the area of a circle. Substituting this in for a in our expression gives us a new equation in terms of r. Rearranging this and taking only positive values of the radius, we can find this equation for the variation of the radius along the nozzle's length. Back in Discovery, under the Body section in the top bar, select Equation. This allows us to enter the equation we just arrived in order to create the line. Here, we have to define it parametrically in terms of our variable t. Start by changing Curve Type to Custom. From here, we can begin entering our equation. Remembering that x is our axial coordinate and y is our radial coordinate, we can enter the equation we derived for y. Since the line is defined in terms of the parameter t, we can start by setting x equal to t in the first box. If we click the expand option, we can see that this has already been done for us. 
Note that the T must be in brackets to be read correctly. Next, click the expand box next to the Y option to make everything easier to read. We can then enter the equation we found for R. Make sure to use parentheses carefully to help define the order of operations correctly. This defines the expression we want to take the square root of. We have a decimal approximation of pi that is sufficient to define the line. We now want to take the square root of this, and we can do this by typing sqrt with only the s capitalized in front of this expression all in parentheses. This fully defines the equation, so you can close the new text box. In the equation definition, make sure that x has been unchanged from the way it was defined originally. Finally, the length of the nozzle is 1 meter. So we want this curve to range from negative 0.5 to 0.5. So we can enter that as the start and end point for t. Ensure that the scale is 1 and click the green check mark. And click escape to close the tool. We can see that this has created the desired curve. With this defined, we can create the rest of the sketch to define the geometry. Start by selecting the line tool in the top bar under the sketch options. Zooming in to better view the curve. Start by clicking the leftmost point of the curved line to start creating a new line. Next, drag the cursor downwards to the x-axis. It should appear to be highlighted green. We want to create a vertical line, so ensure that a right angle marker appears at the intersection of the new line with the axis and left click to create the new line. Next, drag the cursor horizontally along the x-axis until it is aligned with the rightmost point. You should see a black line to indicate that it is aligned. Before you left click, check the dimension on the horizontal line. It should read 1 meter. If you see something different, ensure that you correctly set the units in the settings pane at the beginning of the sketching process, and that you correctly set the scale of the curved line to 1. If not, make these changes and close and reopen Discovery. With the correct dimension, left click to create the line. Finally, Drag the cursor upwards and select the rightmost point of the curved line. This fully defines the sketch. To turn the sketch into a surface, press the 3D mode button near the sketch options. This finalizes the sketch, but we can see that it is just a series of lines and not a surface. To fix this, select the Fill option in the top bar. 
hold control on your keyboard and select all four of the lines in our geometry. Once this is complete, release the control key and click the green check mark. We can see that this has created a surface. In the tree, if we expand design, we can see the surface we created. Additionally, we can see that the lines we created are separate in a group called curves. We only want the surface in the design to make selecting each part less complicated. So right click on the group and select exclude from simulation. If it does not happen automatically, right click again and select hide. This makes it easier to select the correct curves in the future. The Fluent interface does not allow us to click on boundaries to apply the desired boundary conditions. This means we need to set up the location on which these boundary conditions will be applied now. We can do this using named selections. Start by selecting the Named Selection tool on the bottom right of the Discovery interface. First, select the leftmost vertical line and click New. Name it Inlet. Next, select the right vertical line. Again, click New and name it Outlet. Select the top curved line, click New, and name it Wall. Finally, select the bottom horizontal line, click New, and name it Axis. This provides selectable locations on which the boundary conditions can be applied. With the geometry completed, we can close Discovery. Back in the Workbench interface, make sure to save the project to the desired location.